hearing on the statute of limitations for arson? Seven years. Okay. I was really hoping it was less than 20 or something. So I spent the second two thirds of my life in Prescott, Arizona, which is a fabulous town to spend your young adult with. And um, a wonderful town, fabulous place to raise a child when you're single mother. And a really crappy place to try to come out and find a queer community. So um, that came later in Tucson. But I lived in Prescott for a long time. Like I said, I raised my child there, second third of my life. And, you know, I, the, my whole community basically was about five friends, some books, and a couple movies. I think it was Desert Hearts and maybe The Latin Times of Heart Milk. That was my thing. Um, and I had great friends, but five wasn't the big community. And I couldn't date them because they were my friends. <laughs> so, um, what I learned about how safe it was in my community came from a few places, lots of places, but um, two formative things happened. Um, I worked at Yavapai College for a long time in the library, and I helped a young woman put together a bibliography and gave us good resources one day. She was telling me her story. She said, I put an ad in the paper to um, start a lesbian support group, and I got death threats. <laughs> <laughs> That's my community. And, um, I, that same library that I worked in, um, one of the one of my staff fellow staff people said, "I have to warn you that um, our director asked me to fire your student assistant because she is a lesbian." And I'm like, hmm, "Okay, That's safe place to work, safe place to live." Um, I'll be myself. So when it came time for the third third of my life, well, it's probably going to be longer, so <laughs> it won't be the third anymore. But um, I decided I needed to finish my education. The son was grown, and I decided I needed to move. And I was figured I should stay in state because I didn't want to pay out of state tuition. But um, the choices were limited. But Phoenix wasn't even an option. Flagstaff was an option, but my mother was a teacher there, and my sister went to school there in the same program I wanted to go to, and I thought I needed my own place. So I came to Tucson. And I never really wanted to be back in the desert, but it turned out that Tucson was a fabulous community and I haven't left yet, 22 years. Um, so there I am at the university, I'm an older student, I guess at that point, returning student. And um, my major is psychology because I wanted to be a therapist. And first semester I changed my major to women's studies because I like those classes a lot better. And I was hanging out in the Women's Resource Center, going to lesbian discussion groups, and going to coming out day, and things that I never experienced. I think somebody asked me one day if I wanted to go to the park for a little picnic, and there was going to be some gay people there. I think, I thought there was going to be about 20 people. <laughs> there were hundreds. Now I think there's thousands. I don't even know anymore. Um, that's another story, but yeah. So this fabulous new kind of life was opening up, and um, the women's studies classes that I was learning so much, uh, like I said, impressed it. I had learned most of what I knew from books because I was a big reader. Um, and so, you know, I was proud as a feminist. And to my surprise, I found out that could be a bad thing. <laughs> it was very, very mind altering some of these classes. I learned a lot. So here I am making new friends, having a great time, um, finding out about my community. and. Um, I was walking across campus one day, and I looked up, and on Old Main, there was this huge banner hanging up from the second floor, so you could see it for miles. This big, giant, white banner that said, Curing Homosexuality. Somebody said, what the fuck are you? So I guess I can say, what? Oh my god, this is my place. What is this crap? And I was horribly offended, of course. And I went to the dean of students and tried to talk to her about it. And um, I was told that it was freedom of speech, which, you know, I believe in freedom of speech. And it also really pissed me off because I was pretty sure there was a lot of groups that wouldn't get to hang their banner up there. And, you know, to say hate groups. <laughs> um, so that didn't satisfy me at all. So a really good friend of mine and I decided that we had to do something about this sign. And we plotted and we planned, and you know, this was undercover work. We were really proud. Um, we took a white sheet to the restroom in the second floor of the old student union, and 
waited till after dark and made this sign with shoe polish and some response to this sign. I can't even remember what it was, but we had a great time doing it. And then waited until the sun was down and went over to Old Main and we did this sign. And there's a young woman there taking the sign down. We're like, crap. And so we decided to talk to her about it. We found out that she was part of this group on campus, it's funded by a religious group. Um, and they were bringing, the event that they were advertising was the X-ray ministries, which I think is kind of telling because right now there's some stuff going on in the news about that. Um, anyway, we tried to talk to her about it and tell her how we felt about it and of course change her mind, which was ridiculous. And we got the hate the, not love the sinner, hate the sin stuff. And we were like, yeah, we're not getting anywhere here. So we left. Pretty dejected. You know, I really wanted to hang our side up, and I was proud. So for the next few days, walking around campus, there's that big sign hanging there. It's like, oh my god, I hate that sign. And I even asked my professor, I was taking some political studies class, and I thought she would really be in favor of the class going to this event, but she wasn't. We had a test, and we had to do our tests. And so I needed to go, but um, I finished up the test, I went out, and the event was still going on. So it's the X gay ministry, they're giving a talk, lots of people there. Um, there's also lots of hecklers, so it was kind of fun to hang around for a little bit, but my friends and I, we left. We were just like, that. Ah, you know, this, I don't know, I guess I get, I think when I can give a good enough argument, I'm really going to change somebody's mind, and it wasn't working. So I was like, I don't want to hear this anymore, let's see. We walk outside, it's one of those beautiful Tucson, I don't know, if, I don't remember if it was late fall, early spring, late winter, that balmy, windy, kind of breezy, beautiful night. Um, and I don't know if you've been on campus at night, but they have those orange lights, so there's this weird kind of glow. Um, it's, it, it's the kind of night that makes me want to do something, <laughs> get in trouble, do something wild. Um, great setting for it. And so we walked outside, and there's that damn sign. It's up. It's nighttime, but they left it up because events over. They don't care what happens to the signs. So they're like, oh, we're getting that sign. So we go up. At, I don't know if you're familiar with the building. It's pretty big. This is up on the second floor, um, up high, and it's got railings around it on this big porch. And we start trying to reach the sign, and we realize, oh my God, it's 20 feet up or something. It's really high. And that's an exaggeration. It was high, we couldn't get it, we were climbing on the railings, holding on, trying not to fall, kill ourselves. Um, we are yanking on them, not strong enough. And so, just kind of out of the blue, like, the story has a lot of people coming out of the blue at weird times. These two guys are here, we're like, hey, would you help us? And sure. So they came, and they were just strong enough with, with us, and then we can yank it down, we yanked it down, and one of us said, hey, you got some matches? <laughs> And somebody said, yeah. So these guys gave us some matches and then left. They, they didn't stay part of our story. But um, we took the sign down onto the mall and decided to light the match. And, um, you know, I don't know what I was thinking. I burned a piece of paper in my living room before, and they kind of go, Psh. This was not paper. <laughs> this is not string. It was a canvas, 10 foot by something peak sign and it had it was hanging by ropes so it's pretty pretty hefty so we light a match and it just goes huge fire like oh shit <laughs> so because we're good people and we just wanted to make a statement but we didn't want to burn down anything we decided we need to stay and make sure it doesn't turn into a big fire but we don't want to get caught we don't want to get in trouble, so we hide in the bushes and we go ahead and watch the fire. So then this other weird thing happens. This, this guy kind of rides by on a bicycle, and again, it's deserted, it's night, there's this big bonfire. And he kind of rides his bike in a circle around the fire and then rides off. So we stay, it's, like I said, it's kind of windy and we're afraid that it's going to get out of control and that it's a big fire that's staying big. And so the next thing we hear is sirens. <laughs> so we kind of look way down the mall on Campbell, and there's a fire truck pulling in. So we're like, well, I think it's time to leave. <laughs> fire will be under control now. So we leave and go home, but we're terrified. We think we've just done the baddest thing. And I mean, I'm like a 
to say it wasn't, it was a good thing. It felt good. It wasn't the crime of the century, but we were in the country for that. We're thinking, you know, we're students, we're on financial aid, and we just started a fire on campus. We could probably lose our financial aid, not get to finish our education. This is a big deal. And I remember that night we're calling each other, like, oh my God, you think they're talking about phones? <laughs> oh my God. You know, are they going to arrest us in class? We're kind of scared. And, um, you yeah, know, so this went on. We also, I'm telling you, I'm breaking our pact. We made a pact not to tell anybody else that we had done this. So, um, <laughs> like I said, 20 years, I think it's okay. We've got a lawyer in the house. <laughs> so, I will say that this, this gave me a lot of satisfaction. And um, it, it sparked some other interesting events. Um, so I became the, well, it, it opened my heart to following some of the things I believe in strongly. And um, I've, I've done some other things that probably I think they're rest for, but were fun and interesting and challenging. <laughs> And um, I just wrap it up by saying the next morning, my friend Tam and I went to the site, the scene of the crime, and I'm still kind of looking over our shoulders thinking we're going to get arrested. And we see this big burn spot on the mall, and there's a big ring of crime scene tape around, <laughs> around the burn spot. And there's a student, a young woman, I think, inside of this circle of crime tape. I don't think you're supposed to go in it. It's supposed to keep you out. And laying on the backpack, head on the backpack, reading a book. You know? <laughs> so we looked at each other in a truck and walked away. And, and that was really the end. We never got arrested, of course, and no one was after us. Um, but it lit something in my soul that, that I'm really grateful for.